recording of the video because as you know the training action uh, this webinar uh, this uh, webinar will be made available in the eo 4 geo website uh, um, after uh, in in a, in a few days so welcome to this uh, um, webinar a new common agricultural policy based on copernicus program and eo 4 geo tools uh, i leave the floor to uh, mario Comarasca of uh, CNR Italy. Mario, the floor is yours. Okay. Good morning, everybody. So today we have uh, this uh, webinar concerning a new common agriculture policy based on Copernicus program and uh, EU4GEO tools. EU4GEO is a, a project uh, uh, funded by the European Commission. And the uh, presenter will be Livio Rossi of uh, EGEOS and the president of the Italian Remote Sensing uh, Association. Uh, the program is uh, a short presentation of a webinar with a few slides, three or four slides. And then uh, will be presented uh, the eu 4 geo project in a nutshell with a video of a few minutes three four minutes and uh, i would like to thanks uh, lisa bilotti and giacomo martirano of uh, epsilon italia that uh, were really important in the organization of this uh, uh, webinar and after that uh, we will have uh, the first uh, uh, poll that uh, is a simple poll uh, with uh, two uh, questions. And if you have uh, your smartphone ready, you can get uh, the QR code uh, to enter it to answer the uh, questions. After that, we will have uh, a presentation by Livio Rossi on the common agriculture policy background and concept. Uh, this is a short, uh, uh, schedule of the program, but uh, you will uh, see in detail uh, the argument presented by Livio Rossi. What is important are uh, the relationship uh, of the CAP uh, with the European farmers and citizens, the earth observation data and products uh, for the common agricultural policy control and their evolution, and Copernicus data. Sentinel and Galileo for the new continuous monitoring of the agroenvironment. And at the end, the strengths and weakness, uh, benefits and perspective for the next uh, uh, EU uh, agrofood scenarios. And of course, uh, linked to the ne necessary sustainability uh, for the climate change. At the end of the presentation, we will have another a short uh, poll uh, with uh, three uh, questions. And uh, after that, the question and answer. Please write your uh, question on the chat so we can uh, pose uh, the, the question directly to Lidio Rossi. The webinar. Uh, as an overall objective to promote the new opportunity offered by the Copernicus program in dealing with the common agricultural policy. Uh, this uh, webinar is addressed to citizens, farmers, researchers interested in the development and possible future workshop in the sector of earth observation and geographic information. And this activity are uh, developed in the context of a project uh, EO4GEO that is uh, funded by Erasmus Plus uh, and uh, uh, the scope, the final scope uh, is uh, to help uh, in uh, uh, bridge the, uh, ski, the skill gap between supply and demand of education and training in earth observation and geographic information sector. This project is at the third year of the development and we will end in a couple of months. Uh, 
the webinar as uh, some learning outcomes. Uh, understand the importance of the uh, common agricultural policies in, in Europe, identify that observation data and products uh, supporting the uh, common agricultural policy, understand how to interpret and integrate that observation time series, understand how to derive agro-parcel layers by earth observation data, and recognize it as earth observation necessity for a sustainable agriculture and the climate change limitation. Become aware of the possible a possibility of a, offered by the correct use of the earth observation data. So, uh, at the end of uh, this uh, 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 webinar we, is uh, recorded, so it will be possible to reuse, uh, re, uh, have a, uh, a vision of this uh, presentation. So, now the word, the presentation is uh, to uh, Giacomo Martirano that will present uh, the Earth Observation uh, Geographic uh, Project. Thank you, thank you Mario. Project. Thank you very much. So very briefly, uh, after having uh, uh, understood which are the learning outcomes of this uh, uh, webinar, uh, now it's time to have a quick overview of uh, the EO4GEO project. And uh, for that uh, purpose, we thought that the best way is to share with you uh, a short video, about three minutes, uh, explaining uh, what uh, this project is about. So uh, enjoy the video. Just a second to share. Just a second that I'm sharing the screen with you. Copernicus, the European Union's Earth Observation Program, delivers huge amounts of satellite data. These free and accessible data must be interpreted into available information for the benefit of all the European citizens. In fact, the Earth observation sector is based a lot on technological progress and thus is continuously under development. Newly graduated but also the employed workforce not always have all the skills required by the market. According to the European Association representing the Earth Observation private sector, 80% of the EO companies find it difficult to hire candidates with the right skills, whether technical or transversal. This is where EO4GEO steps in. EO4GEO is an Erasmus Plus Sector Skills Alliance which aims to bridge this skills gap and to build an Earth Observation workforce with the right skills, in the right place, at the right time. To reach this ambitious goal and thus to maximize the benefits of the space industry for the European society, EO4GEO produces a series of outcomes. The EO4GEO body of knowledge for the Earth Observation and Geographic Information Sector is an easy to consult inventory of around 1000 concepts from the EOGI domain. The concepts have been identified and elaborated by a network of more than 200 experts from academia, private businesses and public organizations. EO4GEO is also developing an ecosystem of software tools connected to the body of knowledge and based on the concepts described therein. These free tools are designed for training and educational providers, companies and organizations, as well as individuals working in the EOGI field. For example, the curriculum design tool assists education providers to create educational programs for the EOGI sector. The occupational profile tool allows experts and companies to create occupational profiles with the precise skills and competencies needed by each EO profile. While the job offer tool permits to create job offers, starting from a blank template or an occupational profile. EO4GEO is also developing educational offers in the context of the Copernicus program. 
state-of-the-art tools and platforms are used to create case-based training material on concepts and skills that are in demand. All these outcomes will be sustained also after the project ends. This is part of the commitment of the Sector Skills Alliance, which will guide the path for future actions on skills and workforce also in the long term. This will permit students and the workforce to keep the pace of the rapidly changing Earth observation industry and stand out in the Earth observation market. EO4GEO empowering a new generation of users in the EOGI sector. Okay, uh, now let's uh, move uh, back again uh, to the um, presentation and uh, um, just to provide you a link between what you have just seen and the, the training action. Uh, the training action uh, consisting of the webinar on uh, common agricultural policy supported by um, Copernicus data is exactly one of the training actions that uh, will be part of the training offers of uh, the EO4GEO project. But now uh, let's uh, start uh, to make a first uh, poll uh, before to uh, give the floor to Livio for his presentation um, in order to map the audience. Uh, please, uh, how it works, uh, join with your uh, mobile device or um, with another uh, wind window in your uh, browser. Join at uh, slido.com and uh, press and type the uh, EO4GEO hashtag or simply scan the QR code that you see uh, here on the screen. I hope you managed to, to access the, the, the website. If not, I can remind you just uh, later on, simply slido.com and type EO4GEO. So let's start with the, with the first poll, just to map the audience. Simply, we want to know which sector do you belong to. So please uh, uh, start voting. Currently, we are uh, 76 uh, uh, participants. Uh, knowing that uh, not all of you uh, generally like to this type of interaction, so but let's wait a bit to have more uh, replies in this uh, for this poll. So we see a balance between uh, university and research organizations and private company, but also participants from other sectors like public administrations at regional and local level, at national level, also students, not-for-profit uh, organizations, also freelancers. So we hope to have uh, successfully uh, represented here the whole ecosystem of uh, stakeholders around uh, Copernicus. Okay, thank you, thank you. Just a few seconds still to, to, to continue to map the audience. I think we can, uh, we can stop now because the trend is, uh, is, uh, is quite clear. Uh, and now let's uh, go to the second short poll. Very uh, interesting here. Have you ever dealt with uh, common agricultural policy? Independently, if you uh, if you dealt with uh, uh, it uh, using uh, Copernicus or other Earth observation data, but just to 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 see what extent you are familiar with this uh, important uh, domain. It's uh, for the time being, it's a good balance. <laughs> let's uh, let's wait uh, a bit more. 
prevalence of no. So Livio, this is an interesting uh, message for you that at least uh, half of the audience never dealt with, but I know that your presentation is, uh, is also for, uh, uh, let's say, beginners, even though in order to appreciate the powerful uh, support of Copernicus data, uh, it is more evident for people already uh, having dealt with uh, a cap. Okay, I think that uh, we can leave with this, uh, uh, with this uh, balance. And uh, uh, so, Livio, I presume that uh, I will uh, um, share the screen for you. Thank you. And uh, let me put in the in the full mode. And so this is the first slide, and the, the floor is yours. And please uh, tell me when is the right time to move to the next slide. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Giacomo. Thank you, Mario. Good morning to our remote sensing and geomatic in uh, France. Um, I'm, I'm Liberossi. I work in the Geos, uh, the telespazio company, Italian company, and. Uh, I'm one of the co-founders of the um, Italian Remote Sensing Associated with, with Mario Gomarasca too. So I, I will try to be less boring as possible. So I, I apologize in advance if I can't reach in, in this target. Uh, so I, can you ask, can you read the, uh, the index? Uh, the more or less this presentation is uh, focused on the explication of the or important policy of the, uh, the European continent concerning the agriculture. There is some brief uh, information concerning the history and the technology used for uh, dealing with this important policy. And now the, uh, and this, the, the focus on this target is the improving uh, provided by the uh, Copernicus, uh, both Sentinel and uh, Galileo data uh, in this sector. Then, uh, we are going with this policy, so only for agriculture, also for uh, agro-environmental protection and climate change fighting. And at the end, we will get some, some information concerning the new uh, possibility of job uh, opened by this important policy that is strictly related to the technology, especially for remote sensing uh, uh, and geomatic. Uh, next, please. <coughs> So, uh, what's, what, what is the summary of the policy? The, the, uh, finally, the, the, the Europe uh, understood the importance of the agricultural sector uh, even 50 years ago, and uh, because the, the agriculture uh, is very important for uh, strategic, because who is able to produce his own uh, uh, food, uh, as a strategic good position. And uh, also, uh, the, they understood that, that the um, depopulation of the countryside was, was a problem, especially social economic problem uh, in the city. So they uh, adopted a, an important taxation uh, of the European uh, citizens, uh, providing for this tax on more, more or less, uh, uh, less than the half of the European budget. 40 billion of euro each year. Uh, it seems too high, but really uh, it's very important. And uh, for this reason, uh, I, we, with the friends uh, of the uh, year for jail selected this topic uh, for, uh, uh, for, uh, for a topic that is important. Uh, uh, really, um, the, this policy is following each other, the technology. So more the technology uh, grew, and more the policy regulation um, improved. Uh, in 1992, uh, the European Commission allowed the use of uh, remote sensing data, both aerial and satellite data. So they started with the, uh, the geomatic uh, importance in, uh, 30 years ago. So uh, now with Copernicus, the governance uh, uh, is growing because we have new open data and we will go in depth uh, later. Uh, more or less, the, the CAP main tasks are uh, the, uh, the analysis, the control of the farmer declaration, the request for 
subsidy. The remote sensing data, the geomatic, allow the control and then permit the European community to pay the, uh, each farmer for this contribution. Just for an example, Italy received every year less than 7 billion euro for its farmer. Germany and France less than 9 billion euro each year and Spain eight. So it's important uh, funding for our uh, citizens. Next, please. So uh, in summary, what work the, 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 cap, the common goals of policy objective, they assure, ensure a stable uh, supply. And uh, we can say that this uh, target has been reached. Then uh, reduce the import of primary goods, and uh, that's okay. If you remember, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, a lot of uh, products were destroyed because they, there was a, a, a fighting of prices. Now there is more and more this situation because there is a clear regulation of what has been to produce and at which price. Um, then we uh, enable a, the farmer to stay in a stable living, so maintain the, the residuum of the countryside that this target has been reached to. And the sustainable user resource is a is partial, uh, partial task uh, reached. And now the next challenge is they uh, maintain the rural landscape and uh, the climate change findings also through the good agricultural uh, behavior. And that is a, it's an open, it's an open question. And now the, the, the rules of the, the common agricultural policy is, uh, is going to. Uh, but we have to, to say that, um, for instance, the, the agriculture sector in Europe is a unique economic sector, uh, reached the 20% the, the of decreasing of the uh, agrocarbon footprint. Uh, that's one important result achieved by this policy. Next. So, uh, the geomatic task of the CAP is uh, integrated, update uh, cartographic, cadastral, economic data, plan acquire aerial satellite data, and uh, create mapping, create uh, uh, digital services for uh, online ad uh, application for farmers, and then check through remote sensing the, uh, the possible threats that uh, provided by the, the false declaration. After uh, this uh, analysis uh, is quite complex. The European officers provide money that uh, um, must be uh, distributed to uh, in Italy for uh, to 700,000 people, and uh, in uh, Europe, uh, more than 8 million of farmers. Start. Uh, next, please. Yeah, just to example how the uh, the technology uh, has, has been growing. Uh, for instance, we, we used, started with the Landsat and spot data. So uh, 20 to 30 meter resolution pixel for uh, providing uh, some information. But uh, after the, the last 20 years, uh, we started to use a very high resolution data satellite, uh, less than one meter resolution uh, with a good uh, revisit uh, uh, on the right, we can uh, see a very old uh, uh, software uh, screen using uh, lines on the spot uh, and the older ortho black and white and ortho ortho photo just to understand uh, the feasibility of the declaration. In this case, it was uh, an error uh, and uh, this system with the very slow uh, uh, task uh, reached to to provide the the, the the information by the administration. Next. That just to uh, just a glance of the uh, what what has the relationship between uh, the frequency and the re the resolution uh, in the remote sensing for this sector. So uh, obviously we, we we can see the the the, the revisit, high revisit for precision farming, for instance, the low of medium revisit for uh, cap services, and the the other uh, situation. Uh, our target is uh, around the seasonality. And the resolutions is ranging from uh, 50 centimeter of very high resolution um, up to 10 meter of sentinel to uh, satellite. Uh, next, please. 
uh, just to give you some some information that it's important information because uh, these tools are existing in all the european countries uh, all each european country uh, must manage this data must provide this information so uh, some sometimes can be uh, make available this uh, uh, this solution also for private citizens to have you have to check uh, if uh, that uh, is true or not in your country uh, the, the land uh, land integrated parcel system is is a is a system GIS but very very detailed it's one to five thousand scale for all the nation so it's uh, like a cake uh, using uh, land agronomic land use by remote sensing property of the farm and uh, land parcel or cadastral and we can update uh, uh, each each layer in different way maintaining the efficiency of the of this uh, this uh, layer uh, uh, the, what is important for the commu commission is to uh, understand that, that uh, the, the possible large maximum amount of, of money that can receive that portion of land. So it's uh, an assurance for uh, the commission for avoiding uh, to, to waste money and time. Next. Uh, what is that is the, the traditional activity of control uh, that uh, Provide a lot of job position in Europe uh, because, uh, as you as you check in, on the on the on the on the on the figure of Italy and the Europe, uh, there is sampling frame for uh, 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 planning acquisition very high resolution data satellite, mainly GOI for you comes up to uh, so less than one meter resolution for uh, uh, check uh, at sampling level five percent. The, um, the the feasibility of the ad declaration. So left to uh, in the, the middle uh, a, 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 a false color, uh, possibly quick bird or or, or what you uh, data. You can detect the different spectral signature of a wheat field and the rape seed that uh, is interpreted and then for for uh, other. Uh, at that situation, there is the ground survey. At the end of the campaign of sampling, uh, there is a audit by the commission, and the commission uh, will approve for uh, for paying the, the, the each farmer. Uh, next, please. Oh, there's not only money. There's not only a uh, declaration of the crops. So basically, the, the commission. Uh, in advance, uh, uh, study the market situation. If there is a, a need of soybean or a need of uh, more mice, uh, they improve the, the hide for a term of soybean or mice or less. In this way, the market is uh, always compensated and uh, uh, homogeneous. But uh, another uh, target is the uh, agro-environmental protection. And we use also the satellite data for detect the uh, virtuous behavior of each farmer. Look at this uh, uh, image. Can you have some comments? That is a terrible situation because uh, this uh, livestock farmer has a stable with the the uncorrect flourishing of waste deposit from the stable without a, a correct uh, concrete uh, platform. And there is a, an overgrazing, uh, terrible on the, the area that uh, destroy the, the not, not only the grass, but also the uh, the, the, the the high uh, coverture of the soil. That is a sanctioned uh, situation by by also by satellite. Next, please. Another terrible situation, especially in South uh, Europe country, is the land erosion. That depends on the, by two factors. The Climate change because the intensity of rainfall uh, is continuously growing. So, uh, and the uh, cultivation mode, there is no more the ancient uh, stable limit, uh, the small field, and the tractor that uh, didn't arrive to 50, 60 centimeters of, of plowing soil. So, uh, look at the right uh, in 2007. Uh, it, it, very nice uh, wheat uh, area, and two years later, after uh, uh, important rainfall, 
yeah. a, a full of last line and uh, this uh, terrain is lost forever so that we are lost uh, we are losing the our breath of the future this way uh can next please <clears throat> also to remote sensing data uh beyond the the damage we can also uh see the possible remediation and the possible remediation is on slope for instance put a some stable on a stable channeling for uh, reducing the land the uh, soil erosion uh, and we can see on the bottom the the ground truth and the satellite corresponding for check if the, uh, uh, the behavior of the farmer uh, was correct or not next please uh, that is a, a study that demonstrated the efficacy of the system uh, look at the 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 challenging and uh, after the rain the this uh, the temporary challenge was full of soil and this is an experimental and the in some uh, situation bad situation the using the challenge or not uh, is a, a ratio of n times of soil uh, presentation so that is another very important because this as you know soil is not uh, uh, it's not uh, for record extraction uh, one meter or so you can lose uh, one thousand a year or more <clears throat> uh, next oh uh, <clears throat> now we can start with the the Copernicus. uh, gl uh global of monitoring of um, environmental uh, and security was the first name uh in 98 when the, it was uh, when this uh, program was born <clears throat> but uh, we are target is the uh, uh, the thematic service uh, land that within the, the uh, agriculture. Next, please. So this system, uh, this program, uh, recognized by the European Community as a uh, an important technology, enabling technology for so also for agriculture. Uh, suggested to change the strategy of, of, of control, not more sampling, but wall to wall, continuous, in continuous over the, uh, uh, the territory. And uh, uh, in this way, uh, since uh, uh, 2018, uh, some countries, Italy was the first, uh, started with the system uh, in automatic way. So not more sampling, but for instance, an entire province must uh, overlap by every five days by sentinel two and every six seven days by sentinel one for checking automatic way the declaration and the land monitoring we have to think that a, a like a, a a table a table with, with the each row is a parcel and the, in the column are the different uh, markers to be extracted along the town um next that's an example of the Sentinel-2 data mobility and collection. Uh, just to give you that this data, I, as, you, as you know, is open, available by everyone. Uh, but for, uh, for the agriculture analysis, we can uh, use uh, in the south of Europe, possibly in North Europe, quite less, but up to up to one of the possible uh, Sentinel acquisition per agronomic uh, season. So it is very important amount of data that uh, um, recover the lack of, of precision in uh, resolution uh, with the high, very high uh, capability. Next. Just uh, an example how to this system works that uh, was invented by my colleague Fabio Walter and his team. And uh, is uh, the system used in an uh, Italian uh, paying agency uh, for uh, uh, the uh, cap monitoring. So, so the, the uh, data collection, SAR and optical, the uh, GSH, the declaration, graphic declaration uh, provided online by the, uh, the land authority. Then there is the uh, processing, the uh, index extraction, the overlaying of the, uh, this uh, overlapping or 100 data of satellite on the, the declared parcel, then the different graphic for extract the market, and finally the the, the results are ready for payment. 
So in this way, as uh, we can reach more or less uh, um, 97, 98 percent of green tax, hence uh, we can pay. Uh, and some other yellow to be uh, go farther, and or directly red because uh, it was clear that uh, that uh, terrain was not cultivated uh, at all. Next, that's an example of which kind of markers we can are able to extract in automatic way by using uh, Copernicus data. So plowing, growing, vegetation present, harvesting, moving that is cut or grassland and the grab especially for permanent crops. Um, obviously, it's not so easy uh, because we have to take uh, in consideration uh, the type of crops, uh, which kind of period, the phenology, uh, but also the, the, the different uh, geographic position, the, uh, the slope, the altitude, the latitude, the, the local tradition. So we have to use the this screen driver for each portion of land for extracting a good result using uh, the automatic uh, way Copernicus data. Uh, also, we have to uh, pay attention to the regulation that uh, every year can change. It's very important to, to pay attention to this, this, this situation. Next, please. So, uh, go, now we are go uh, rapid because uh, just uh, an example of how it works. That is a uh, uh, for instance, and the representation, graphic representation of the vector parcel declared for uh, for subsidy in Puglia. Next, uh, just another uh, example of how this uh, layer can be extracted by after the, the first marker uh, in an individuated in an automatic way. For instance, the, uh, what are the the, the plowed uh, parcel or not? Uh, plowed means uh, that it's cultivated, that uh, can uh, receive uh, data in a correct way. Uh, not plowed, uh, it's a very serious uh, possible uh, uh, source of fraud. Uh, that is the statistic uh, very important to demonstrate, uh, uh, not only at parcel level, but at administrative level to the administration. Next. Yeah, go just an example of entire province of how to, can we reach the, the analysis. Very simple, but just to be clear, the, 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 for the, the entire uh, province of Viterbo, not Rome, that's less than 40,000 square kilometers less. Next, please. Yes, uh, the white is the, the all the declaration, uh, so more or less the 70% of the territory is agronomic. And uh, they request for the 70% of the subsidy from the European Commission. Next, we can enlarge a, a portion of land that is sentinel data in color, natural color. Really, the system works uh, It's very important to underline in uh, false color because, uh, as you know, uh, our remote sensing friend in uh, using for the vegetation, the, the, the color and possibly if it exists uh, double red is the quite a mandatory uh, uh, technological aspect. Next, the overlapping of the, uh, the parcel or the old parcel. Next, the overlapping only for the winter crops. So it means uh, barley, uh, wheat uh, um, and, and, and other, other Type of winter crops. Next, as well, you know, uh, the the situation changed. Next, next again. Uh, no, now we're in April, and the, the full vegetation uh, is, uh, is is visible. Visible, but uh, is, all the the parcels are are uh, checked by in automatic way, considering the different internal pixels both in peaks and in average. Next. Next. Oh, now we are the, in June and there is a clear maturation. There is no more uh, phenolo um, phenological uh, activity uh, registered by the infrared. And uh, so we can see that uh, the, the, uh, the, the cultivation are quite at the end of their seasonality. And in some kind, in some situation, we can also see the harvest in the, the central part. You can see the whitish parcel that is, uh, seems that uh, 
uh, has been uh, harvested. Next. Uh, sorry, come back. Sorry, sorry. Thank you. So, I, as you see, there is a yellow button in the, the left higher part of the, the slide. As you see, they in the mid June uh, is fully vegetated. Impossible to be complied with uh, the winter crops that in June must be mature or already harvested. So, that parcel was uh, automatic detected as no winter crops, no wheat, and therefore they will not pay for this kind of declaration. Next. Uh, also for uh, grassland, grassland you use uh, not only Sentinel-2, but especially Sentinel-1, because Sentinel-1 is very uh, active in detecting the geometry. And the geometry uh, is very important for detectors that the grassland parcel has been moved in the correct time or not. So we use uh, the capability of, of uh, optical and SAR2 for growing uh, inaccuracy. And we arrive to more than 90% inaccuracy in Russian detection. Why? Using only radar or only optical, we can, uh, we can uh, go uh, more than 70% uh, of, of accuracy. That is very important because the, in this, this case, the integration uh, is, is, uh, is, uh, is, is the real solution. Next. Uh, some use cases. Next. Oh, just to, uh, just to demonstrate you what the satellite the automatic way can uh, can see. That is a a, a, a barley uh, field. You can see the the the, the grow of the uh, in the uh, in the figure and also in the curve for uh, see the starting the growing. Uh, Ratio, the growing uh, gradient uh, of the, the, in the for the indexes, then the maturation and the harvest, uh, and uh, and just there is, there is some regrowing of natural vegetation in July, but uh, in next October the field has been applied again for the next season. That is a, more or less the complete agronomic uh, uh, analysis that the satellite made uh, in autonomy. Next. Just an uh, example of the statistic we can provide. Uh, one of the, the issue is the 10 meter resolution sentinel that uh, doesn't permit uh, a, an, an analysis uh, below a certain parcel size. And we reach maximum uh, 2,000 square meters, so 0.2 hectare. Uh, in some other portion, half an hectare uh, sometimes, uh, but the, our limitation. Is this for a parcel smaller? We have to use other other system and uh, or ground survey or auto imagery or uh, other uh, information. Next, just an example of uh, the harvest market. Next, just an example of the uh, grabbing for a for a vineyard. As you see the the possibility using the Sentinel-2 also for uh, extract this information. That's a very important from the economic point of view because, as you know, there is a lot of money uh, for uh, uh, planting, replanting, uh, or uh, uh, extracting and uh, grabbing uh, uh, this uh, very important economic uh, uh, cultivation. Uh, but, 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 it's very important to say, a flat zone, the Sentinel can be used, and the mountain with the rose, uh, 10 meter resolution can be not enough. Next. Oh, uh, finally, uh, when the satellite uh, finalizes work, there is a follow up administrative procedure to uh, check uh, if the, the satellite gave the current response and go directly to the panel, or there is some doubt and the, the parcel are called yellow parcel. That must be. Uh, must be performed as an additional analysis through the back office that use a visual interpretation or understand if they uh, will using other other means of the or the major photo uh, graph survey and, and what uh, for uh, finalize and complete the analysis for for the the farm generally we have two three per three percent of these yellow situation that it seems uh, nothing but really Considering, uh, for instance, six million of parcels analyzing automatically, 
uh, if you extract the two or three percent, it's a, it's a well, a large amount of work, unfortunately. Go on, please, the next. Just the how to work our back office uh, app checks uh, and they use also the some uh, photographs by ground and uh, there is the recommendation from the uh, from the uh, European community use geotag photos or the, some application use our mobile phone for uh, acquired uh, very precise and not uh, manipulated uh, photo. Next, please. Yeah, so we. Uh, prepared an app that has, has been built by uh, uh, Jeff uh, and the user uh, for uh, uh, give the, the assurance that the, the, the photo uh, has been acquired in the time, in that uh, date, because it can be from the satellite. There is a perfect cone on direction because there is a augmented reality and there's the, also the tracking capability, but using Galileo, using Galileo, a EGNS, or CAP system by the agency of Prague, uh, we can uh, uh, use a double frequency, the dual, dual frequency, and reach the, 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 the more suitable position using the simple mobile phone up to two meter, and also speeding up the positioning of uh, ground acquisition. That's a very, very important uh, technology acquisition, thanks to the Galileo contribution together with the, the other uh, GPS uh, providers. Next. So, uh, some consideration on the uh, this system. In green, the good, red, the, the limitation, and uh, yellow, uh, the middle. So, the, the, the uh, arable land, perfect, work perfectly. The uh, uh, dissemination uh, for, uh, of the, to the farmer, the system improves the awareness of each farmer. And they understand that they have to reduce their errors or frauds because there is a system that controls them and controls all the territory. Uh, by the way, the, the, that's the poor resolution 10 meter uh, obliged to use the other system for parcel less than 2.2 actors. And for permanent crops or parcel for data, we have to use other systems. Generally, we use the LPIS, so land partial GPS system that has been updating every three years with the 20 centimeter uh, ortho measuring. That is a, a bilateral uh, uh, situation. So a very high resolution every three years, less resolution, but every five days. The combination provides a good project. Uh, next. So now uh, we have to the future. Uh, the future is the uh, we have to add this to a new uh, target because the European citizens spend better this money because it's our money, not only for their agriculture, that's very important, but also for their em environment protection and safeguard. So the, uh, the next target of the CAP will be uh, the organic farming, more organic farming and precision, CO2 absorption and carbon footprint reduction the biodiversity and also to push all the remote sensing data for a, 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 a health chain concerning soil, water and the food. Next. So now the new scenario, if you, um, the, the next time, so the, 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 the checks by monitoring, by Copernicus data will be obliged with an obligation in 2023 in all Europe, all the European countries will be at uh, their disposal a system, a platform that can provide not only the control of the cultural system, but also expand benefit costs for other agro services, for the insurance, small farms, local professionals, and offer at marginal cost because the platform is ready, a new geoformation tool for the uh, climate change fighting, so the CO2 absorption fluxes, uh, and using also uh, a lot of information at territorial uh, level, uh, also for civilian protection at the flood, the, the legal, illegal clear cuts in forest, uh, the water provision, the any forest fires uh, 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 provision of the, in the balance of the carbon fluxes and so on. Next. 
just an example, we have to say two Sentinel-2 image uh, comparison in, in two years. As you can see, uh, the after the drought, summer drought, there is a, a water reduction. See the shore of, of 50 meters more. The recent fire, and we can detect also the source of the fire. It can be very useful for the uh, torch guards. And also we can get uh, the, in the on the left uh, a clear cut uh, on the uh, on the forest uh, uh, campus. So if using the same uh, uh, system, we can provide agriculture, forestry, environment, uh, civil protection, and uh, also police uh, information. Yeah. Yeah. There is some uh, noise. Please uh, move your microphone, please. Thank you. Next. So that's another uh, example of use of this kind of platform for the environment. That is uh, the Sentinel-2 data for extraction the, uh, after the via uh, uh, wind uh, storm uh, in, uh, in South of Europe two, two, three years ago. Uh, we can see on the left, uh, they prevent the image of Sentinel and then the damage of the, of the spruce uh, uh, woodland uh, after the, the storm. That is very important uh, to understand uh, which kind of amount of damage uh, and uh, provide information for the uh, first uh, operation of a safety guard and rescue. Next, we are quite uh, to arrive at the end. Just a um, few words for the, the local capability using these tools existing at European level. So we use the map, the land parts of the vehicle system, the optimal measure, the satellite data that can available. Also for some local, that is an example of the Xylella disease, that is a bacterium that is drawing uh, the olive in south of, of Puglia in Italy. And we use also ortho, uh, airborne, but also drones for uh, checking uh, the, uh, this, not only statistical level, but uh, for indicating where this uh, uh, disease uh, is growing and uh, in which percentage. Next. <coughs> Finally, just to comment. So, finally, we can say that the Copernicus uh, community in the agricultural sector improve the uh, the response to their requirement and provide uh, unthinkable uh, workable service on our territory. The availability of the Galileo uh, is uh, open the, the more mass market application, so more application, easy to use in position, especially. So uh, it's, a, it's been a real improvement. Uh, really, uh, our community, our dramatic community, uh, can be the digital transformation facilitator, like the recovery fund, as you, you more or less. But uh, this system. Uh, the need of the system needs uh, the dramatic community, the remote sensing effort, and the cartographic uh, uh, technicians. Beyond the cap. Next, I suppose the last. Um, so uh, we have to be aware that this uh, Sentinel uh, using platform is raising worldwide. The analytic cloud, the supercomputer, uh, a real facilitator, um, obviously. Moved by ourselves. Um, the system, the land partial identification system in Europe, but uh, we have to push also for uh, building this kind of system also outside Europe, especially in developing countries, because the, is the first step for a correct uh, management of agriculture and food production. Uh, really, this uh, new situation can open new, uh, new valuable jobs. Uh, for the public administration, primary for the uh, public agency for uh, uh, the CAP. That is, can be national, local. For instance, uh, uh, Italy as a, a national, but uh, even uh, nine local. Spain, uh, more local. Uh, Germany, 16 uh, lender. So there are a lot of possible administration that must manage this uh, 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 data. So. Uh, the, the open GIS expert on semi-natural resource are needed for managing the, the graphic declaration. 
the industry is searching artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence that's help to automatic classification, both satellite aerial data and cloud system management. While for the small enterprise or scientific body, the growing expectation is towards expert in new uh, after observation index, uh, even integrated with different sensors and uh, new figure like uh, data scientists. No more single statistic uh, as per remote sensing uh, or geologist uh, or economic, but data science means uh, you are able to manage those data, uh, providing uh, the good support uh, to the different needs uh, of the agricultural sector. Thank you. I finished. I, I thank you thank you very much for your uh, amazing uh, journey into a real uh, operational environment in which earth observation and uh, geo information support uh, european citizens businesses and uh, institutions in a, in a real uh, uh, operational environment really really uh, exciting uh, what, all what you showed now let's continue with our uh, with our program, and uh, this is time for the for the second poll before to open a question and answer session. So let me try. Okay, you should see again the the slido.com um, page, and so let's go to the second poll with the three. Yes, um, short questions. This is the first one. So to what extent does Earth observation data support you in your activity, not necessarily in the in the CAP related activities, but in general, we are very much interested to know to what extent EO data uh, are playing a role in, in your activity. You can answer uh, everybody. So, <laughs> uh, really, uh, in, my, in my activity is uh, it's quite uh, complete. Yeah, yeah. I started uh, using remote sensing uh, for the first time uh, in uh, 1984 when the Lanza 5 started to uh, to provide the first images, and, and that's very important because the the remote sensing. Uh, started to provide geolocated information not more uh, declaration uh, on air uh, or statistics uh, without knowing where this problem or this situation really uh, were located yeah so um, they, that is very important also for uh, um, push our our politicians to be more concrete yeah by the way it's um encouraging to see that the majority um, uh, for the majority the the earth observation data support at a large extent uh, okay like even though only 33 so less than one half of the people uh, uh, currently attending participated to this let's move to to the next one So now going into more details, please vote uh, to what extent could the CAP methodology stimulate other applications in your work? Because you saw many methodologies based on uh, remote sensing and uh, uh, geoinformation uh, technologies playing a key role in the, in the CAP context, but I guess that uh, what you have seen can stimulate other applications in your work. Yes, yeah, surely, as you presented in some slides, because uh, we, have to, we have to remember that this uh, application, this sector uh, has been funded, has been funded uh, with, by the, the community because uh, uh, we have to uh, say that more 40 billion euro cheer at the means that uh, each country must manage a lot of money for managing and providing this system. So uh, the system is rich, but using the same platform, the same achievement, you can move to other less rich like the environment. And so we have used the uh, with other indexes, with other uh, 
a target, but uh, the, the same intermediate costs are the same. And therefore, yeah. we have reached a lot of uh, environmental uh, civil protection. Um, also, for instance, think to the, um, uh, the current rural or uh, yeah. Yeah. the current uh, house uh, detection uh, without taxes uh, or so and so on. So it's very, very mm -hmm. easy to use uh, this system. At By the way, interesting to see that uh, um, besides the that all the replies are in the upper part of the in the rightmost part of the, of the diagram it's interesting to see that 41% um, uh, of the participants uh, identified uh, estimated uh, that uh, what you show it can simulate other application in their work so let's go to the uh, final question uh, even more uh, technical to what extent could the automatic NDVI time series be useful in your field of activity? Of course, we are going uh, more into technical details, but it's interesting to know in terms of the overall reusability of the methodologies that you just showed uh, in, uh, in other yeah. domains. Yeah, you use obsolete and NDVI. Uh, other uh, other index also. but NDVI as a it's generic but as a uh, an advantage as the uh, possibly uh, a, a very large uh, uh, very large capability from zero one so there are more possible gradient information so that as uh, can move uh, and detect different uh, more than other index. Yeah, also in this case, it's interesting to see that uh, uh, I think the interpretation of these uh, replies are all in the direction of uh, uh, at least perceived um, reusability of the methodology in other domains, which is uh, another another good point to, to comment on. Uh, okay, I think we can uh, we can uh, stop with the poll and uh, at this. This time, I invite also Mario to open his uh, microphone and open uh, his uh, camera because we are now entering into the the uh, question and answer uh, sessions. I um, I think I can reply. For, uh, I invite you to to write in the chat the question that you would like to ask to um, especially to Livio, I guess, to our uh, main presenter. I think I can uh, mm, uh, reply to the, for the time being, to the only question we have at the beginning uh, isn't also a question whether the CAP objectives can be reached in the future. There might also be trade-offs between them. I think, Livio, that, uh, mm, of course, but this is more a, a, a matter of the uh, DG Agri and other uh, institutions entitled to, to manage the CAP objectives, uh, which uh, more and more can rely on the support of uh, uh, Copernicus data in order to tailor, adapt, change, improve objectives and all the cycle in this, uh, all the policy cycle, isn't it? Livio? Okay. Uh, sorry, I, I, I didn't get. Yeah, sorry, I didn't get. Permuted, yeah. So you, you, I think you, you agree on, on that. Um, yeah, yes, but sorry, I, I can get. So can you repeat? Sorry. Uh, no, it was simply a question at the beginning. Uh, um, uh, if cap objectives can be reached also in the future, and there might be uh, also trade-offs between them. And I just replied that this is more a matter of uh, the DG Agri and other institutions involved in the in the constant uh, and continuous um, upgrade of the whole policy cycle. Yeah. So basically, the citizens are asking for this. So the improving, the enlarging, the capability, not only for the agricultural payment, agricultural subsidy, but for the their environmental protection. So their health, their food protection. There are uh, health for the a good uh, environment conditions. Yeah. So the all the policy will be devoted to this uh, target. Okay. 
Okay, missing is the relationship, the strict relation between DG Agni, DG environment, DG grow, the other DG that are uh, has our uh, national administration are ra racing by alone. Yeah. So uh, besides reminding what we already uh, wrote in the chat that uh, in terms of availability of the presentation that the entire webinar recording will be available in the Geo4Geo project website in the specific page of this training action and you will be notified by email when this will happen. Uh, it's popping up uh, another question for you, Livio. What about the analysis of parcels smaller than 0.2 hectares? Is there any free earth observation data source suitable for this uh, scenario? No, unfortunately. So uh, there is uh, some other, uh, uh, for instance, the, the planet uh, or other constellation that could be useful, but are under subscription. There is no open. So uh, for instance, Italy used uh, for this very small parcel the um, how, ma how, how, many, how much amount of money uh, they represent. See, the, 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 the amount of money it represented very low. They keep checking if this parcel are really um, arable land, for instance, by their uh, existing database. Otherwise, we have to pay, uh, and the European Community can provide some information, some data. Uh, so the but uh, the paying. Okay, now there is a very challenging question. Let me let me share, but reminding that all of you have access to the chat, you can read it. So, what is, in your opinion, the future of Earth observation in the European Union? Will we stay using only Sentinel-2 or Sentinel-1 or also another commercial satellite will play a role, like Satlogic with a 99 centimeter ground sample distance or other very high resolution commercial satellites? Uh, uh, current, currently, the, uh, the Copernicus will remain remain the, as as uh, as now so there is two sentinel one sentinel two sentinel three sentinel five um, and also sentinel uh hyperspectral foreseen for uh, within the, the five six year but the resolution will be more or less the same so as uh will be open in this way consider that uh, for each country at the uh, at, at country level uh there is the um the the other uh, uh, sources, commercial sources, that may contribute to fulfill the gap of the resolution, more or less, of this data. And uh, you have to find some relationship with the administration on your project to uh, achieve this data paying less uh, as possible. But uh, there is no uh, European planning now for a very high resolution data, for instance. That is uh, devoted to the commercial sector that the Europe is represented by Airbus in France, but also there are a lot of uh, consortia that are growing, also Italian, German, Spain, and so on, but commercial. Okay, thank you. Now, uh, another question, what's the future of uh, UAV and HASP, which I guess stands for high altitude platforms or things like that. I don't know you, if you are more aware of. So alternative uh, sources of data uh, rather than um, Earth observation satellites. Yes, of course, the, yeah. yes, yes, the, 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 the main issue is the benefit cost analysis. Because uh, obviously uh, UAV is very important. They can detect a lot of information can replace easily the ground survey and the in situ data, but 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 there is the cost, there is the 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 ground capability in uh, in the back. For instance, with the, the the free the the open to less than two kilometers can reach more not more than three hundred hectare per day. That is quite nothing. So we have to select the the uh, the target and understand if the uh, it, the, the, the balance of the budget can be uh, yeah. can be indeed correct indeed and i guess also on or less in the same direction is the next uh, question uh, will uh, farms with parcels less than 0.2 hectares be 
more closely monitored in the end than those with larger parcels. I guess that, uh, uh, of course, the, the, also in this case, there is a cost-benefit analysis to be taken into account because uh, the, um, the, as far as the parcels are uh, small, of course, the, the amount of sub subsidies are lower. But uh, I leave to you the floor to, Lidio, to reply to that. Yeah, then, and, and then there's a way the same because the European community, uh, for instance, accept uh, up to 2% of uh, error, up to 2% of frauds or error or mistakes. That means 2% of uh, unbalance of the budget. So uh, if there are a lot of small parcels, but the amount of surface is very, very few. Uh, there is no more interest to go in deep uh, because uh, the, the, the money uh, related to this uh, small land portion is not important. Okay, now it's uh, with the, like the others, but it's a very interesting question uh, related to skills. So, do you know how many Earth Observation analysts are working in the public agencies, for instance, in Italy, or generally data analysis is provided externally? What is your uh, your uh, experience, your knowledge, Livio? Uh, really, really, the, the, there is a standard contractor, uh, the standard contractor, because uh, and uh, just uh, last few a few years the public agency understood that they have to include in their uh, personnel skilled people uh, if for also for for controlling the, the contractors but it's very important that the administration must be uh, more skilled in, in this because uh, more uh, awareness of this uh, uh, solution more the, the the enlargement of these techniques uh, will be but apart uh, so you have to push that yes yeah, but apart the the need that you just highlighted do you see any any trend a positive trend in in increase of uh, job uh, real job opportunities for uh, yeah. experts working in the in the uh, paying agencies for instance yeah especially for for instance that in, in south of europe in italy or other there is uh, the thousands of agronomy agriculture local center that help the farmer to draw their parcel in a correct way uh, for their declaration because an error uh, means uh, not paying and therefore it's very important now uh, with the, the provi provision of automatically and also satellite segmentation for dividing the different fields in the correct way uh, this is kind of expertise so we have to push uh, uh, and, and for uh, searching this center and propose uh, your uh, higher te level of technician. Te okay. And then another question is, is if uh, and now coming back to the also to the U4GO main mission, if this uh, uh, need of uh, of this demand of skills, uh, to what extent is uh, covered? is provided by the, the offer uh, of, of people uh, properly trained and skilled uh, out of uh, university or masters or, or other types of, of training. But, okay, let's move to another uh, interesting, very interesting question coming from uh, ARPAB. I work at the Environmental Agency of the Veneto region in the Soil Quality Service. We are dealing with erosion, soil consumption, and other environmental issues. My question is about LPIS as it is available in Italy. The parcel layer available in Italy is absolutely inadequate with serious topological problems, not usable for our purposes. For instance, updating regional land cover layer. May we hope in an LPIS more usable layer in the near future, Uh, yes, we, we consider that the Europe, some, some countries are uh, already open. Slovenia, uh, Netherlands, uh, some parts of other countries, and Italy not yet. But uh, I suppose that the next uh, future will be because uh, they are renovating also the technology using artificial intelligence for updating their, their map 
and therefore uh, the this map are more precise and there is less problem in distributing outside but you can uh, ask for uh, some bilateral uh, agreement for receiving the data maybe uh, then, then disclose for not diffuse so on because uh, really there is a map about so the other uh, sensible information of the farmer so we have to exclude them from any kind of provision but you have to think also not only the LPIS but the uh, the source of the data so orthophoto that are uh, available for all the public administration in Italy that are paid by the AGEA and the, the government then the, is are free we have to task them and also satellite data acquired for scattered information at very high resolution that uh, you can use uh, uh, through a license uh, for agricultural uh, purposes you can uh, find, fulfill uh, EULA for the GRC that is a official pro provider you can get this data yeah by the way I think it's important to highlight how uh, let's say ground-based data is a uh, complementary uh, with uh, with the um, satellite data uh, in order to achieve a, a common goal. But let's move to another related question, even though um, touching upon the uh, need of uh, an interoperability and uh, uh, harmonization between LPS. I've been working, it comes from Germany, I've been working on the classification of crop types for Germany. The LPS data for Germany is managed at a federal level and these cause issues when trying to homologate codes at the national level, among other problems such as quality control for parcels and so on. My question, <clears throat> sorry, is there a way to push for a standardized LPIS data management and storage for the future development of remote sensing products such as crop type mapping? Uh, yes, uh, really, uh, there are some specific projects. Uh, one is called NIVA, I N I V A, that uh, must uh, organize this kind of specification for uh, this interoperability. What is the problem? The problem is that uh, uh, this system are being created at local, national level with different specifications at the beginning and different costs. For instance, in some part they start only for the agronomic zone, just for uh, providing information for the declaration. Italy, for instance, I include all the territory, uh, towns, uh, woodlands, uh, and, and uh, water, and so on. And Spain has spent a lot of money on, in different ways. So there is some issue, not only from the technical point of view, but from the political. So I spent, for instance, 20 million for creating this map to uh, the other the neighboring two and there is some issue in in the voluntary sharing of this data but uh, what is important is the growing request from the citizen for this if the uh, request of citizen is growing also the policy will change but in terms of specific more specifically in terms of uh, harmonization of, of the codes uh, mm. possibly across europe in parallel to other uh, bigger uh, data harmonization exercises like those of Inspire, for instance. Are you aware of any specific activity uh, going for this harmonization? Mm, uh, more or less, uh, the, the, all the uh, paying agencies in Europe uh, are um, uh, within Inspire. So, uh, from the technical point of view, there are no more, uh, no big uh, obstacles. Uh, the, the issue is, uh, is the, uh, I, I pay for my, my country, I pay for my lender, uh, and therefore uh, there is the, the, the uh, what is needed is an obligation of the, the agency for, uh, uh, for sharing. It's yeah. uh, important, but uh, only through a real obligation uh, pushed by the technicians, our community and the citizen, I would be we reach this uh, this target. Yeah. By the way, I can uh, also provide a bit of uh, uh, more information to uh, in the reply to to the Roger's question, saying that uh, 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 there is a, a, an interoper a cat related interoperability exercise currently ongoing uh, 
at um, DG Agri level. And uh, I, I was partially involved uh, last year. I know it's continuing to uh, aiming at providing all the, the full uh, cycle with, uh, with a standardized way to, uh, to provide uh, uh, metadata for cap-related data sets and also the provision of uh, network services allowing uh, a better uh, data sharing and is still, uh, is still ongoing. But now let's move yeah. to, the, uh, to, the, to the last. Uh, so, sorry, Livio, would you like to add uh, anything? No, no, no. There, there is a the project uh, funded by DG Agri for for this time, for this uh, purpose. Good. Okay. So uh, we have the last because then we have to. We are approaching the end. Um, from Belgium in Flanders, every year there is an area-wide photogrammetric airborne campaign, Ultra Cam Eagle, twenty centimeter ground sample distance, so mm. that we can combine temporal high-resolution sentinel services with. Spatial high resolution airborne data. So, this is a, um, another testimonial of uh, how, uh, you, when, when going to um, validate and to, to before to, to have a final action on the um, payment of the subsidies, uh, there are complementary um, data sources that can support the, this process. Um, I don't know. Uh, you, you already mentioned, uh, with the, for instance, with the uh, geotag uh, app uh, that you showed it in Italy. So there are different ways to to ensure that the entire process is uh, run in the smoothest way possible. Little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very important to to get some uh, ground crew. The ground crew can be by the airborne or UAV data or ground survey. Ground survey now. Are quite mandatory by using the geotagged photo by the regulation of the European Community, yeah. and but provide the secure, and protected, uh, uh, and no manipulated uh, photo from the ground. And the, the uh, every nation can pay uh, the airborne because uh, the Commission manage and pay only satellite data, obviously not uh, airborne that uh, can be ruled by the national legislation rules and so on. So that is the difference. Yeah. So the, the, the Flanders want to acquire every year a 20 centimeter data. Good, but it's a it's an expense. On spot, yeah. So thank you, thank you very much, Livio. Uh, I think that all the questions highlighted also the interest uh, that uh, your presentation uh, stimulated in the audience. I think that it would be interesting to uh, dedicate maybe another uh, another separate event to to talk more um, specifically about the, the the skills needed to to execute all these uh, uh, business processes but now it's time to go to the end so i leave the floor to mario for the final words and i guess mario that uh, i will uh, uh, share again uh, the screen unless yeah you can comment on the, we have the last two slides. Mario, the floor is yours. Okay. Yeah. Do, do you see the screen? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, so thank you, Livio. Thank you, Giacomo. Very interesting discussion and questions. Uh, now, just uh, I would like to Remember that uh, this presentation with the, this uh, webinar is uh, uh, part uh, of the uh, EU for Geo uh, project, and uh, that uh, uh, is an important European project just to uh, involve uh, stakeholders and earth observation geographic information. Uh, people that are working in, in Europe just to join and to in, uh, reduce the distance from the uh, uh, availability of data and request of data. And uh, now I, I give you this uh, questionnaire that you will receive also by uh, email uh, after the end of uh, uh, the webinar. But just if you, please, uh, if you want to answer to this uh, questionnaire, that is uh, easy, very quickly to fill. And this is uh, 
mandatory to have uh, uh, and to obtain a certificate of participation. So uh, thank you very much for your uh, participation and thank you uh, for support uh, our activities and to learn about uh, what we are doing in this uh, project. So there are more and uh, more training material for people that are interested in uh, more training uh, material catalog and training action. And uh, inside of the, the EU for Geo project, there are a lot, a lot of solutions. And uh, uh, so if you are interested, you can join us and uh, follow our activities that uh, will end uh, at June 2022. So we are uh, uh, almost uh, in the last year of uh, activities, but uh, we are really interested to involve uh, all of you uh, uh, in uh, our development uh, and activities. Also, as an expert, uh, you can work uh, on our uh, uh, system because uh, we, we need the expertise of people that are in the Earth Observation Geographic Information, but are also are not inside these uh, activities, but are interested in using uh, Earth Observation data. Thank you very much for your participation and see you next time. Thank you all. Bye-bye.